Guys, lots of news from Iceland right now. Did one eruption just end? Did it? And does another eruption start a way more powerful one? What about Barda Bunga? 5.1 earthquake just happened. And then, of course, we have to talk about the Blue Lagoon that just opened. So stay with me. Let's start. Rudy, concentrate. So guys, the Blue Lagoon is open again. It opened on Friday, but the hotels are also open right now again. And how do they get the visitors in there? Because as you can see on the aerial pictures, wow, did that current volcanic eruption create a lava carpet and did it stress out the defense walls? So they had to really work to increase the defense walls, to make them higher, to close the gap in the roads, to prevent the lava from flowing into the Blue Lagoon and I mean these pictures are incredible kudos to all these workers with their dozers and excavators but also in these pictures you see how close everything is and I said it yesterday now the lava carpet is higher it might create and help a natural barrier for the next lava flow but it also might elevate the next lava flow so that it can breach the defense walls and then flow into a low spot because now Sword Sangi is a low spot because of the defense walls the lava carpet has build up around all this so visitors have to go to Grindavik and then from there there's shuttles that drive them into the Blue Lagoon and there was also a television interview with RUV today Helga Anas Dottir she's the manager of the Blue Lagoon she seems to be happy about things are going you see people are flocking in there she also says she thinks people wanted that because there were no cancellations in reservations so it seems everyone is happy there and then it seems there's a webcam from RUV that has looked at the eruption and they say well it looks a little bit has the eruption stopped but they can't really tell completely they said well let's wait during the night if it's dark it's a little bit easier to see if something's still glowing there or not but you know if the eruption has stopped now then it has stopped faster than everyone expected and the thing is this eruption already started faster than anybody expected right they thought it's going to be a christmas eruption so should this one be over it kind of matches with what's happening in the magma chamber underneath the blue lagoon and short sangi the land is rising again right woody oh I have, i've got to lean here that's actually more comfy like that woody what do you think <laughs> Oh, there's weird light. It's sunshine today. It's so beautiful. We were able to go for a walk in case you're wondering why I'm in an RV. Check out my playlist in the end, uh, taking the motorhome to save my dog's life. So for those of you who have supported us and are supporting us with the coffees to be able to pay for Apollo's vet bills, thank you so much for your support. It's helping so much. But back to Iceland. Barda Bunga, Barda Bunga, Barda Bunga, whatever you pronounce it, guys. This guy is capable of a lot. And as this thing is covered up by a glacier, it can get explosive. So what is this guy? So Barda Bunga is an active and productive strato volcano. So the classical volcano that is like... Vesuvius for example a big like cone style volcano and it's located underneath Vatna Jökull in the Vatna Jökull National Park so what is Vatna Jökull that is Iceland's most extensive glacier and it's the second highest mountain in Iceland with 2,000 meters. That's 6,000 feet above sea level. So Barda Bunga is also part of a volcanic system that is called the Barda Bunga Vaidi Vatn volcanic system that is quite large, guys. It spans a very, very large area. So it's approximately 190 kilometers, that's 120 miles long, and 25 kilometers, that's 16 miles wide. Oh, Rudy, that is really cute. So, Bada Bunga had an eruption that's not so long ago, basically 10 years. So it last erupted in August and 2014, and 
the eruption style was effusive, which is common in Iceland, but this something like this had not been seen for a few years. So when this erupted, lava covered the surrounding landscape, basically northwest of the Vatnajökull glacier. So Badabunga is underneath the ice cap of Vatnajökull, but Badabunga is not the only one that we might need to worry about. There's six volcanic systems underneath Vatnajökull. Badabunga's caldera is about 65 square kilometers, that's 25 square miles, and up to 10 kilometers, like 6.2 miles wide, and it's about 700 meters, like 2,300 feet deep. So this volcanic activity that's underneath Vatnajökull is quite impressive and massive. But the volcano is covered in ice and that's quite a lot of ice that's on top of it. So we're talking about ice to a depth of 850 meters, guys. That's quite a lot. That's 2,790 uh, 2, feet. And that ice is hiding the crater. The crater is filled with ice and that's why this thing can produce something explosive if water slash ice meets with magma. Badabunga has quite a remote location and that's why it was little known. But since they found out what this thing can do, it's definitely more researched and of course monitored. So Badabunga has infrequent eruptions approximately every 50 years or so. That's why it wasn't really on the radar that much. But there's recent studies that have shown that many tephra layers that are in Iceland where they thought that they came from other volcanoes are actually traced back to Badabunga. And there is always a chance that there could be lateral dike intrusions that could happen, like intrusions if it's when magma is on the way, but it remains underground, it doesn't reach the surface to create an eruption. So lateral intrusions could trigger, coming from there could trigger the other volcanic systems. So the seismic activity at Bardabonga, and that's why the 5.1, that's the fourth over five this year. So seismic activity has already been steadily increasing since 2007 and it has actually led to an eruption in 2014, but not a massive one. But it's impressive enough that we should have a little bit of a closer look what the experts are saying. Let's have a look at the recent list of earthquakes in Iceland. So we're the green stars, that's where the 5.1 happened and you see it also in the chart below. That's where this volcano is located. Should we be concerned about these earthquakes? Well, what the experts are saying is that the activity at Bargabunga has not been higher since 2015. So since 2015, this is the highest activity that the volcano has shown. So basically since the last eruption ended, this is the highest activity. Basically 2015, when this eruption ended, that was the largest volcanic eruption in recent centuries. And that took place in Holu Raun. So just before 2 a.m. this morning, Icelandic time, a 5.1 earthquake struck Bardabunga, the Bardabunga caldera in Vatnajökull. And what's a little bit concerning is that earthquakes of this magnitude have become quite common at Bardabunga. Like four earthquakes, I mentioned this, magnitude five or higher have already happened this year. So we had one in April, I reported about this, um, another one in September, the third one in October and the fourth one just last night. So Paul Einarsson has given a statement. He's Professor Emeritus of Geophysics at the University of Iceland. And he has said the volcano has not been more active since the Holuraun eruption, which was the largest lava flow in Iceland since the Skaftaka eruptions that took place in 1783 till 1784. So very, very significant, very, very big eruption. And he says Badabunga is probably our most powerful volcano that they have in whole Iceland. 
and he says it has shown quite a bit a certain activity since 1974 which tells us the story of this thing this thing is really really active and uh, he says there was an eruption in Jalp in 1996 and then the Holorau eruption that lasted from August 2014 to January 2014 so also a long lasting eruption and he says all the earthquakes are related to movement in that caldera that is located underneath the glacier so it is connected with volcanic activity that is for sure no tectonic activity or anything else basically magma has been rising up in that caldera again basically since the last eruption the whole around eruption ended in january 2015 since then it's been rising up again after it had subsided after that eruption so then the crater basically has been rising again since 2015 and that has been accompanied by earthquakes up to magnitude five in the five ranges but what he says in the last two years this has all been increasing the the land rise and the earthquakes and we know what that means and guys i'm shaking now here because we've got quite the storm going on here so the rv is shaking so what he says this increased activity does probably reflect that the magma in this crater is now rising faster than before it's heading towards an eruption the question is just when also he says that volcano is collecting its magma to get ready for the next eruption this activity could indicate that we could expect a volcanic eruption in these areas anytime soon in the coming years who knows but we should expect one it's not unlikely Paul Einerson says it's difficult to estimate how much magma has accumulated at the moment that's why it's difficult to say when we will see an eruption we can only observe that everything is increasing at the moment so because that volcano lies underneath a glacier it's really really hard to tell but he is of the opinion that quite a substantial amount of magma has accumulated underneath Bardabunga again and one interesting thing is so when the eruption started in 2014 it has emptied out the magma chamber right and then there was a land subsidence of 65 meters so if you compare this at Swartzengi, we're talking centimeters right whenever we see an eruption the magma chamber underneath Swartzengi empties out the land is subsiding a few centimeters but think about this 65 meters can you imagine how much magma must have been in that magma chamber how big that magma chamber is and what a powerful eruption this can create the volcano has filled up that magma chamber to some extent we don't know how much but you know this is one volcano that we definitely need to watch because this could give us an eruption at any time so that's why i said maybe the eruption on the Reykjanes Peninsula just ended and maybe Barda Bunga is now taking over maybe a Christmas eruption. Who knows, guys? Nobody can tell. But I thought it's important for you guys to know that. If you think the same, that it was important, give Udi and I a like for this video. Send it to your friends. And if you're new here, subscribe to our channel. We would love to have you here. And guys, if you want to become a member of this channel to see a lot of behind the scene videos, especially what we're doing here right now, become a member of my channel. And if you want to support us, um, which is greatly appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Go to our buymeacoffee.com website slash silky. Here is the QR code. The link is also in the description of this video. I hope to see you soon. Check out these interesting videos in the end screen. And for my members, you will see what we did this morning. We took a two hour walk all with all three doggies to a dam that is here at the Snake River. Very interesting stuff. So check it out. It'll be online soon, but only if you are a member, guys. So see you there. Bye-bye.